Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Frank and I'm your host and today we're going to be answering the question, what is love and why do we feel it? Love is a beautiful thing. For most of us, it is something that is a bit of an end all. If we meet that special someone, life is filled with rainbows, sunshine and warmth and every color seems to be more vivid but is also a very curious emotion. At first glance, it doesn't help keep us alive, and in an age where divorce and infidelity run rampantly, love can be seen with much skepticism. So why do we want it so much? Why have we fallen out of it? And how does it happen in the first place? When we first fall in love, the very first step is lust. Don't let anyone fool you, lust is vital. To different people, this means different things at different levels, but ultimately, our purpose in life is to have kids that stand a better chance of surviving than we do, and our sex drive fuels us to do that. The next step is attraction. Attraction goes a step deeper than lust. Lust gets your attention, but attraction keeps it. Experts have narrowed down the feeling of attraction to three neurotransmitters, or three different chemicals, adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. The initial stages of lust and attraction increases your stress response, which increases your adrenaline in your blood. This is why when you make slight contact, maybe you brush hands or brush up against your crush's side, you get nervous, you start to sweat, and your heart races. For those of you who have come here trying to become pickup artists, this is the reason why people try giving negative compliments or using lots of sarcasm. This move can increase stress levels, increasing adrenaline, which they hope will move them one step closer to them falling in love with them. Sadly, Though, this is only going to work for people who have lust on their side because that is the first step. Next comes dopamine, your pleasure chemical. It is released in your brain when you reach a goal, chase a desire, win a game, or have sex. It also has the same effect on your brain as cocaine, giving you more energy, less need for food and sleep, and making you associate pleasure, success, and happiness with this new person. Finally, serotonin increases sexual desire and function, as well as improved memory and improved physical and cognitive function, basically meaning your brain works better, your body works better, you are more of an alpha, you're better for survival, and this is why you're going to remember them more and you're going to have more physical feelings of attraction and why the person always seems to be in your thoughts. The last stage of love is attachment. This is akin to what the ancient Greeks called pragma, which is the love you earned only by staying by each other's side for a lifetime. So what does love look like when you reach this stage? Oxytocin is released into the bloodstream and has been nicknamed the cuddle hormone. That's because the highest levels of oxytocin is reached right after orgasm. It deepens the feeling of attachment. So essentially, the more sex you have in a relationship, the closer you will feel to one another. And this is good news. However, there is one more chemical being released in the body, vasopressin. And vasopressin increases your physical and emotional desire long term. It is the direct cause of long term feeling of devotion. So why does our culture experience so much infidelity and detachment, a uh, hookup culture, if you will? Our thought patterns have an incredible impact on our emotions. Because love is so important for both our happiness and our survival, losing it is one of the most painful things that we can experience. In a culture that teaches people to protect themselves rather than to persevere or choose safety and risk, many people learn to forego bravery and to ignore oxytocin, responding only to the dopamine, which results in temporary happiness but no attachment. This, combined with a less perseverant culture, leads to an increase in divorces. And of course, women having the right to divorce men and having the ability to actually monetarily sustain themselves, which is definitely not a negative thing. Back to love, some individuals also experience lower levels of oxytocin than others and are the ones who are less loyal. 25% of individuals tested with higher levels of oxytocin had claimed that only 25% of them had cheated at least once in their life. However, a group of people with lower levels of oxytocin were tested and found that over 50% of them had been unloyal in a relationship before. Luckily, many people still have higher levels of oxytocin and some still persevere in search for that beautiful feeling of love. So does that mean that love is something that can be reduced to a series of chemicals and brainwaves? Well, for now, I would say that's a matter of opinion. 
These chemicals could just be the way that our body gets the message. Perhaps you believe in a soul and that some souls are just meant to be together. These chemicals could very well just be the way that your physical body gets the message from your metaphysical soul. Or you could look at it this way. If we program a robot to feel pain, and if it were to get hurt, does that make the pain any less real for that robot? Maybe love is the same for us. It might be able to be reduced to some chemicals and neurological impulses, but that doesn't make it any less real or less wonderful to us. And finally, if you came here to find that special someone, here's how science says you can fall in love with them. Find a complete stranger, reveal intimate details about your lives to each other, and then stare deeply into each other's eyes silently for five minutes. Good luck, lovebirds. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin. I'm your host. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like what you saw, you can click that blue button in the corner over there and subscribe to the channel for more great content. And we're going to be back in a couple of days when we're going to be talking about something that's kind of on the opposite spectrum of love. We're going to be talking about clinical depression, normal depression that the rest of us feel, and if you might have it. See you guys then.